the Tudor's Dynasty podcast. Welcome back to another episode of A Brief History. I'm Rebecca Larson. Today, I'm going to tell you all about one woman who really knew how to shake things up in Tudor England, Margaret Douglas. Margaret Douglas's birth was no different than her life. It was dramatic, exciting, and dangerous. Her mother, Margaret Tudor, Dowager Queen of Scots, was removed for the Regency Council of her son, James V. And fearing for her safety, the pregnant queen fled Scotland and found refuge at Harbottle Castle in northern England. It was there that Queen Margaret Tudor gave birth to a daughter, Margaret Douglas, on the 7th or 8th of October, 1515. Little did this newborn know, but she was born into the English line of succession after her mother's claim. In 1515, Henry VIII did not yet have an heir. By 1533, Margaret Douglas was placed in the household of Anne Boleyn, second wife of Henry VIII, and was at the heart of all the courtly revels of the time. Anne Boleyn's household was very active and full of music, dancing, and poetry. It's while serving Anne Boleyn that Margaret met Lord Thomas Howard. He was the younger brother of Anne Boleyn's uncle, Thomas Howard, their Duke of Norfolk. Near the end of 1535, Margaret and Thomas had fallen in love and become secretly engaged. It was in July, after the downfall of Anne Boleyn, that Henry VIII learned of the couple's engagement. He was enraged by the news, as you can expect. The king had recently declared his daughter Elizabeth a bastard, while his other daughter Mary had already been named one. This left Margaret Douglas next to Henry Fitzroy in the line of succession. Her unauthorized engagement to Lord Howard did not fit into Henry's politics. On the 18th of July, 1536, Parliament condemned Thomas Lord Howard to death for attempting to interrupt the line of succession. However, Thomas Lord Howard was spared execution, but remained in the tower even after Margaret broke off their relationship. Margaret was also sent to the tower at this time, and it was while in the tower that she fell ill, and her mother, Margaret, Dowager Queen of Scotland, wrote her brother, King Henry, to request that she be sent back to Scotland and never return to England. The king allowed Margaret Douglas to be moved from the Tower of London to Sion Abbey. She was supervised there by abbess Agnes Jordan. She was eventually released from imprisonment on the 29th of October, 1537. Two days later, the man that she had loved died. While the pain of losing Thomas Howard seemed unbearable to Margaret, a few years later, she fell in love again while in the household of Henry VIII's fifth wife, Catherine Howard, this time to another Howard and brother of the queen consort. His name was Charles Howard. When Henry VIII found out about the affair, he was extremely displeased once again with his niece. This time she wasn't imprisoned, but was reprimanded and sent to Kenninghall, the home of the Duke of Norfolk. Margaret was back at court again for the wedding of Henry VIII to Catherine Parr in June 1543, and a year later she was married to Matthew Stewart, Earl of Lennox, a Scottish nobleman who had offered his allegiance to Henry VIII. While the union was political, it did turn into a love match. Margaret and Lennox had several children together, but only two sons, Henry and Charles, survived. As a Catholic, Margaret Douglas was not a fan of her cousin Elizabeth I's Protestant reign and preferred a Catholic to succeed her. Who better than her cousin and Margaret Douglas's niece, Mary Queen of Scots? And who better to marry off and make king or king consort of Scotland than her own son, Henry, Lord Darnley? The thing about a marriage between Mary, Queen of Scots, and Henry, Lord Darnley, is that together they would unite two Catholic claims to the English throne. And those thrones would be ruled by the Stuarts. Since this is a brief history, I'll just abbreviate the rest of that part of the story and the fact that things didn't go as Margaret had hoped. 
because her son, Henry Lord Darnley, was murdered, and Mary, Queen of Scots, was eventually forced to abdicate her throne. But this wasn't enough to deter Margaret Douglas or the advancement of her family. She still had one son alive, Charles. In 1574, Margaret teamed up with Bess of Hardwick to wed Bess's daughter, Elizabeth Cavendish, to Margaret's son, Charles, Earl of Lennox. But again, without permission of Elizabeth I. As you can imagine, the Queen was not very pleased with the deception, and Margaret spent another stint in the Tower of London, but was eventually released. On the 7th of March, 1578, Margaret Douglas, daughter of Margaret Tudor, Queen of Scots, and first cousin to Edward VI, Mary I, and Elizabeth I, died. Margaret Douglas lived quite an eventful and full life. Her ambitions for the throne never seemed to cease. And in the end, it was indeed a Stuart who claimed the thrones of both England and Scotland. James VI Thank you so much for listening to another episode of A Brief History. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider subscribing wherever you listen. In addition to that, if you like this episode, please click the like or love button to make sure that other Tudor fans are introduced to my podcast. If you're looking for a commercial-free experience, head on over to Patreon and become a patron. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.